Most of us empaths see this world as a fair place, as a good place only until we encounter a narcissist. It's at that point our entire belief system is destroyed and our inner world is turned upside down. Why? Because we encounter evil in a human form, something we thought only exists in stories and myths, but it's devil incarnated in our life. That is when we are left with questions that we feel nobody can answer, not even our own, own brain. We stay shocked, ruminating the same things, saying the same things again and again to different people, trying to understand like what happened to me. And these things reveal a lot, primarily the shock, deep betrayal that you are trying to get a hold of. Hi, I am Danish a psychologist and a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. In today's episode, I am going to talk about three things every single survivor of narcissistic abuse says and how to kind of understand them so that you can move forward. If that sounds interesting and you're eager to learn more, please consider subscribing because as I always say, your subscription to the channel can help in spreading awareness about narcissistic abuse. Number one, I did not know people like this existed. I did not know people can be this evil. Why would somebody say this and when would they say it? When they have been violated in every single way imaginable. They can't comprehend how someone can so strategically inflict pain and effortlessly lie. They can't understand how somebody can fight tooth and nail for custody when they hardly care about their children how somebody can be so manipulative, how somebody can distort reality just to avoid taking responsibility, how somebody can compartmentalize things and minimize abuse just to make it seem like the other person is being overly sensitive, how somebody can not care at all about the person they claim to love, how somebody can shift and change like a cloud and turn into an entirely different person when they lose interest. How somebody can go back and forth between being a nice person and a monster, like, in, like it's just breathing for them. This is astounding. Why? Because you're not like that. You can't understand how somebody can be this evil because you're not evil. You do not have a brain of a narcissist. For them, it's their identity, it's their personality. And the shocking thing is, nothing is evil in being that way. You are asking this question because you never thought something like this existed. However, upon encountering the narcissist's rottenness, their evilness, if you will, you could not believe that a human can be this destructive. Probably your idea of monsters was, oh, they come wearing horns and a red cape and, and basically you'll be able to see it and recognize it. But now, you are dealing with somebody who was quite charming, quite calm, quite kind or whatever in the beginning and they changed into this. What? How? How? Why didn't I know about this kind of deceitfulness? Why was I blind to this? Probably because you were raised by good parents, because you didn't experience narcissistic abuse before and maybe you did not know people can be this bad. Yes, you knew to a certain degree that people can be manipulative, people can distort facts, people can lie, but this is entirely different. This is on a next level. This is this exists on an entirely different plane and you have been there and that world still feels alien to you. Number two, how can all of that be a lie? I mean, come on, explain to me, how can all of that be a lie when I still to my bones feel that niceness this narcissistic partner showed to me in the beginning? I have these good memories that tell me the opposite and sometimes I get, I get confused. I don't know what is real and what's not. Like inside me live two people. One kind of hates him or her or the other just, just I guess, wants to give that relationship one more try. What if? Like, how can I bring that good person back? This is what I get to hear almost every single day. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because this shows the level of confusion created by the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde nature of the narcissist and the pain, the confusion, the disturbing dual reality. 
the dichotomous nature of the entire experience. People are left flabbergasted, wondering, like, how can this relationship be a lie when I felt the reality of it? Like, when I know I have the emotional memory, I remember feeling connected with him or her. I felt like he was there, she was there. They were listening, they were paying attention. Like, how are you telling me it was all a lie? How can I process all of that? They really grapple with understanding that it was nothing but a big illusion. They fail to understand that the person they fell in love in the beginning did not exist. It's really hard for them to accept that they were dealing with a facade, with a mask that the narcissist had intentionally put on to abuse them, to confuse them, to sell them a reality, which unfortunately they did not know was nothing but a, a fabrication, something they had created. This is why people say, how can all of it be a lie? Like sometimes he was real, she was real, or at least that's what I felt. And you're saying it was a lie. This also shows the honesty of the person who was asking this question. Like, no, for me, it was not a lie. At least from my side, I was fully invested in the relationship. For me, I, I was doing everything I could to make it work. Like, no, it was not life, a lie from my side. I know, I know that, I know that. It was not a lie created by you. You did not contribute to that big of a lie in any way. You were just made to become a part of it and that too, non-consensually. You did not know that you were becoming a part of uh, a narcissist shared fantasy. And that is what they sold you. All of it was a lie. And accepting it is like accepting the death of a person who is still alive. The irony is that only dead for you or the person they thought they were is dead for you. And that is what makes the grief so complicated. That's what leaves you with an extreme form of betrayal trauma because you feel betrayed by somebody who does not exist. So who would you hold answerable? That's the, that's the complexity of it all. And for these reasons, I am doing a workshop in July. The topic will be how to overcome betrayal trauma caused by the narcissist. The dates are 7th and 14th July. This workshop only happens twice a year. In this workshop, I'll help you understand how a narcissist betrays you beyond infidelity and how that leaves you with a moral wound. Then you will learn how to heal yourself so that you can trust yourself and others once again. If you want to book your spot at an early bird prize, click the i button above or the link in the description of this episode. Number three and the last one. I don't recognize myself anymore. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I like. I don't know what I want. I don't know how to move forward. I feel like I have turned into a shell. Have you said this? If yes, drop your answers in the comments below. Do you struggle with it? Just share your experiences. Who knows? A lot of people will be able to resonate with you and feel less alone in their healing journey. So why wouldn't you feel this way when the narcissist made you question every single thing that you were into? They, they kept you in this small cage and they made you feel small about yourself so that your greatness is suppressed. You're meant to be great as an empath, as a human being. You have that potential in you and they hated it because they didn't have it. They couldn't steal it away from you, so they had to destroy it. They were jealous of you and they expressed that jealousy as animosity and enemy. Why wouldn't you feel so disconnected from yourself when this toxic individual questioned, rather made you question your intuition until you lost connection? When they filled your head, head with chronic doubt through gaslighting, through twisting reality and shaping the environment in a way to make you fail and then prove to you, see, you are the cause, you are overly sensitive, you are reacting to our situation, nothing is wrong, you're making up things, you are interested in villainizing me and nothing else and I am not as bad as you make it seem to be. Things are going the wrong way, in the wrong, wrong direction because of your childhood trauma, because of your baggage, because of your issues with men, this is what they say or you do not know how to treat women, or you are treating me like a burden because you are interested in somebody else. Like I can go on with the list, but the thing is they truly dissociate you, not disconnect. Dissociate is a heavier word. The emphasis 
is on absolute uprooting. They dissociate you from yourself. They make you go against your moral code by settling for the things that you could have, would have never settled for, like cheating. They cheated on you. Had another partner, a non-narcissistic partner cheated on you, you would have said goodbye, like farewell, I don't want to do anything with you again. Like, I don't want to see you. But this person convinced you that it happened because of you, that you were not giving them enough attention, that they were craving it and so on. So you were burdened with the guilt, the shame, and you gave in. You gave them chances. You were like, no, I need to make it correct. What did I do wrong for them to seek that support somewhere else? How can I provide it? That is what we call a guilty conscience. The fear of abandonment. They're going to do it again. They'll leave me again. Or a sense of obligation that... I made it wrong, I will have to correct it now. All of this is what keeps you trapped and it makes you break your own moral code, thus leaving you with massive cognitive dissonance of self. What does that mean? That simply means the version that you see yourself as or the version that you were before meeting this crappy individual is not the version that you are now. And the gap is massive, which also leads to self-betrayal, unconscious self-betrayal. You end up betraying yourself when you just do what the narcissist wants you to do. But that's not in your hands. You just have to do it. You don't have any choice. And that's what leads to shame, the spiraling, the anger towards self and blaming. Why, why didn't I leave earlier and how can I be so stupid and so on? This is what I call a moral wound. If you want to heal from this, make sure to join my upcoming webinar which is happening in July 7th and 14th. The link is in the description for more details or click the I button above. So three things. One, I did not know people can be this evil. Two, how can all of that be a lie? No, come on, something, a part of it has to be real. Three, I don't recognize myself anymore. There's a lot more that people say, which I would like to know from you. Drop your answers, what you say in the comments below. With that, let's bring this episode to an end. Thank you so much for, for staying with me. I'll talk to you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.